In this video, we'll take a peek at my silent compressor and how I temporarily assembled it. I'll walk you through each component piece by piece. Also, why I don't think all products should be purchased off of eBay and Amazon. This was the first bad sign of my purchase on eBay. I couldn't identify the terminals. The shady part of it was in the advertisement itself, the seller wrote specifically that there was no warranty against electrical shorts. So I guess buyer beware. Compressors come in different configurations, but they're typically marked usually on the outside of the cover or the inside of the cover or on the compressor itself. But if you don't know how to identify it, here's how you would do Here's it. what your typical setup is gonna look like. You will have a start, a run, and a common terminal. In order to identify them, you will need to measure the resistance of all three pairs. Your start to common is gonna be your medium value. Your run to common is going to be your lowest value. The start to run will be the sum of the start to common plus the run to common. Once you've measured the start and run terminals, it will always point you at the common terminal. Okay, you're going to check for the ground start and common terminal. Got open line, resistance, got my alligator clips. Check the bottom two. Nine point three, nine point two. Check the left and the top. Nine point three, nine point two. Put this back, confirm. Nine point two, nine point three, nine point three. Check the last two terminals, top and the right. Nine point three. Everything is nine point three, nine point two, nine point three. Let's see if this actually has a short. We've got an open line. At this point, it was obvious that the unit was fried. I continued to check just to make sure that it wasn't shorted against the case. As you can guess, this turned into a lot of extra work and hassle and a lot of downtime I did not need. This is my new unit I received from an HVAC specialty store online where real people work, answer phones, and technical questions. What I learned from one five minute phone call was more informable than any eBay or Amazon listing. I don't recommend buying from eBay or Amazon, not because I got burned from a seller that sold me a broken unit, but because Amazon and eBay sellers don't have important specifications listed. So basically you're buying blind. Tip number one, horsepower rating is not enough to make a purchase. I was looking at two units, both rated at three quarter horsepower. $20 was the difference. This leads me to tip number two. You want to know the horsepower and the BTU ratings and the parameters in which they were tested. At supplyhouse.com, they pulled out their spec sheet, walked me through it while I was on the phone. As you've seen, although this unit arrived strapped to a pallet, double boxed, I decided to check the unit anyways. For those wondering about the shipping, yes, it was free. The delivery service even contacted me to schedule the time of delivery. After installing the compressor, I wanted to test how quickly it can refill the tank. This pressure switch has a differential of about 30 PSI, so I needed to drop the pressure down to 60 PSI in order to test. I want to give you guys a real-time look at what it takes to refill the tank. So what I did is I got the stopwatch and I actually turned it on before I kicked the compressor on as you will see and hear. The old compressor I had off of Craigslist uh, was pretty good. It actually used to recharge it in just under five minutes. Now this new compressor is a three quarter horsepower compressor, which can actually do it in about two and a half minutes. A huge benefit is now I can increase my cycle durations or increase my cycle frequency and know that I got it covered if needed.
Okay, now that we tested the compressor out, here's a look at the entire silent compressor. Here we got two of the compressor motors. One on the right I got from Amazon. The one on the left is the three-quarter horse that I got from supplyhouse.com. And the compressor tank itself is a repurposed old compressor that broke down. So I believe it's a 25-gallon that we're just salvaging. Okay, what we'll do from here is we'll do a walkthrough component by component so you can see how it was actually assembled. So here we have the extension cord. I believe it was a 25 foot cord, 12 gauge um, that I got from Harbor Freight. Next up, we have the pressure switch, which came with the compressor originally. Uh, it has a 30 PSI differential, which I like. I think it's better than the ones I'm using for the HPA system. This is the pop-off valve, which is the safety valve uh, to prevent the tank from overpressurizing. It'll pop at 150 PSI. Okay, the brass T-fittings are quarter-inch pipe thread, which I picked up from Harbor Freight. They're female, male, female threads. Then I got the quarter-inch steel pipe from Home Depot. The brass adapter actually came with the sediment catch filter, which was also from Harbor Freight. And the thing about this one, it has a drain feature on this catch filter. So that serrated knob is actually spring-loaded, and when the pressure drops to zero, it, the spring pulls it up and releases all the condensation and water from the bottom of the valve. I had to put a zip tie on it because originally the compressors I had on it were too small and could not pressurize that chamber quick enough so the valve would stay open the entire time. That being said, uh, I still have not tested whether or not the new compressors are capable of filling up the sediment chamber quick enough to pressurize it. and push that valve closed so the zip tie still remains to this day. Next to it we have our quarter inch brass pipe fitting which threads directly into the tank as our outlet connected to a brass T fitting which goes to the original pressure gauge connects to the catch can into the T fittings then to the regulator valve which has another pressure gauge attached to it which is connected with a quarter inch steel pipe and to our solenoid, which is going to the air atomizing aeroponics nozzle. Okay, next to the brass fitting, you can see the white PVC pipe, which is threaded directly to the tank. This is a temporary fix because uh, the original check valve failed and I needed to do something. So I got a half inch pipe thread to slip joint, glued it together to a one way check valve which this check valve is good for 150 PSI, which is glued together to a 90 degree slip joint to half inch pipe thread, which is then connected to a brass half inch cap, which I drilled two holes, a quarter inch, and soldered on some quarter inch tubes. As mentioned, this is a temporary fix. So until I receive my actual check valve, I'm using the PVC piping and using some zip ties to help secure it since I'm not 100% comfortable having it under full pressure. The copper tubes are actually utilizing compression fittings which work well. Uh, when tubes are new they work great. But on the other side I had some older tubes which were slightly out of round and this created a problem because the compression fittings would not crimp down and create a good seal. So I had to solder it, which didn't come out very nice, but it got the job done and it gives me a place where I can disconnect and replumb once a new check fitting comes in. Here we have the connection to the compressor itself and we have our inlets, which I made some filters utilizing cloth because I couldn't find any filters that would fit at this time. So I'll still need to shop around and look for those. Regarding the wiring, uh, each compressor is going to be a little different. So refer to your manual, I guess. And on this one, uh, you can see on the cover, it's marked run, common, and start. So 
it's a little different from this compressor here, which you can see there's just a ground wire to the chassis, and then you got your white neutral and your line in. What else is there? Uh, basically, I guess there's just the particle board that I used. Uh, I just traced out the footprints, drilled some holes, mounted it down to the original mounts on the compressor itself. The particle board that I used is three quarters of an inch of scrap material that I just had lying around. I guess something to take note of is that some compressors will have different bodies and might require you to use a router to cut out the bottom, as I did there for the old compressor. Hope this video was helpful. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this.